Thank you so much, uh, Barry. It's a real honor uh, to be a co convener of this class. Um, I also want to acknowledge the Dean. It's great to be with you. Um, and thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to contribute um, and uh, really address the issues of our time here in the United States. Um, I want to start briefly with a story. Um, us politicians like to start with stories. I won't make it too long. Uh, but I want to start with a story that really illustrates uh, why this election is so important uh, to me as a citizen of the United States, but also as uh, a chief executive officer in government. Last summer, as you all know, um, there was a little debate going on, and there was a collision course around what we were going to do with the nation's economy. And the Democrats and Republicans were debating back and forth during that time period uh, about how we were going to address our deficit. And there's a question around what was going to happen with our credit rating. Everyone remember that last time? Mm -hmm. Well, here I am, the mayor of Newton, and I was involved with another little election, maybe some of you know about two at the same time. <laughs> Um, and my cousin got involved a little later on, Elizabeth Warren, I'm talking about the Senate. Um, I was campaigning out there for the Senate, but I was also wearing the hat as a mayor uh, for a brief period of time. And I got a phone call in my office from Moody's investors. And they said, we need to talk to your staff, um, you and your CFO and the leadership of your town uh, legislature as soon as possible. It's an urgent matter we need to talk to you about, about your bond rating. And I said to myself, well, I know that there's this debate going on, but what does this have to do with Newton's bond rating? What are we, what are we really talking about? Two hours later, I convened, convened the staff, I convened the Board of Aldermen, and they informed us that one of the rating agencies were going to downgrade America's bond rating, and that Newton, with its AAA positive outlook bond rating, would be affected by that. Because if the United States bond rating went down, then communities with the AAA bond rating, positive outlook, would have to go down. And I couldn't believe it. I said, but to Moody's, look, we've got a solid tax base. We've done our homework here in Newton. We have a solid financial plan. We're putting money into savings. He said, no, you, you don't understand, Mr. Mayor. That's all nice, well, and good. But again, when the United States bond rating is downgraded, you and other communities with AAA positive outlook bond rating also are in jeopardy. Well, this, of course, sent my staff into panic mode. Why? Because if our bond rating is downgraded, it means the interest rates when we go out to our bond sale go skyrocket, which means two things. One, all that road work, building work, sidewalk work, all is going to cost a lot more money, which means we probably can't do it. Secondly, it also means that basic operational funds in my budget would have to be decreased, which means cutting teachers, police, firefighters, and basic services, all in one fell swoop. So they said, Mr. Mayor, so I said, what can I do to sort of go against the feds here? I mean, can, I, can little old Newton and some other communities actually have an effect on this? Can we protect our bond rating? They said, well, yes, you have 30 days to present the case as to why the federal government's bond rating wouldn't affect your bond rating. And I said, well, what are the factors? I said, well, you got to look at how many people you employ with the federal government in your city. You got to look at your employment level. You got to look at what industries you have, how steady your, your, your property tax base is. Uh, we want to look at the history of your operations, not just in your term, but before that. So we got to work. Long story short, 
Uh, the crisis was averted, as we all know. We presented a strong case as well. Our bond rating was protected. Why did I tell you this story? Why did I tell you this story? As a mayor, I'm the mayor of everyone in my city. I'm not the mayor of the Democrats, and I'm not the mayor of the Republicans. I'm the mayor of my citizens. When people come into my office, they want to make sure their kids are being educated in a way that puts them on the path to success. They want to make sure their streets are safe, and we have enough police officers on the street. They want to make sure that are repairing the roads. They're not driving over potholes. They're not tripping over sidewalks. They want to make sure that basic city services are not only in place, but are excellent. And the interconnected nature of the federal government, the state government, and, the lo and local government are coming together and closer every single day, which brings us to this point right now. The people of our country have a decision to make about what direction they want this country to go in. And it's a pretty serious one. Our citizens, I think, sometimes forget that when they're looking for making sure that their water's clean and their streets are safe and their kids are educated, that the decisions in Washington actually matter. So this course this course is critical in examining and offering I, what I believe the policies, direction of our country. I think we can all agree, no matter what party we're from, independent, Republican, Libertarian, wherever you're, we know this country has been based on a certain opportunity. We know this country has been based on the latter that's been offered all the way back since its inception a couple of years ago. At the same time, we also know that there's a rugged individualism that we're proud of here in America, that we can bootstrap our way. Everyone in here has a story about how their ancestors, their grandfathers, their mothers and fathers were able to be successful in this country because of that way. The question is, how do we get there? Now, Barry went through the course, fiscal policy, sort of broke it down. How involved should government be in fiscal policy? That's a question we're going to face in this course. Should we veer away from trying to decide where and how to direct our funding? Should we go towards a market-based economy? As some of my friends who on the Republican side, unleash the opportunity for capitalism to flourish, market economy? Should we, at the federal level, have a president that's much more hands-on? It's going to stimulate the economy. It's going to fuel the economy. <coughs> we know between 2013 and 2022, it is estimated, CBO is saying that 23% of GDP will be based on spending. And we know 16% of GDP, roughly at this stage, GBO projection, at this stage without decisions being made at the end of the year, which I know we're going to get to around taxes, is around 16%. Is that the right, is that the right formula? Is that the right, are we in the right place? We know we have huge deficits. Does that matter? with our economy. We know we came into a collision course last year. Does it matter that we're running trillion dollar deficits right now? Debt, it's beyond that. Why do we need to address that? And how do we address that? Is it through, again, cutting back government, making government smaller? Or is it about investing, growing? It's about unleashing the market, cutting taxes even more. This is a question we all have to face. Education, part of the ladder of opportunity. We know education is based on property taxes. In Newton, we're fortunate because education is based on property taxes. We have a strong tax base. A lot of other communities that don't have the same 
resources that Newton has. They don't have the same burdens. They, other communities have other burdens, much more greater burdens than Newton has when kids come into the classroom. Should we remove federal government from education even more? There's a philosophy out there. Should we veer away from the federal government being involved, not only on the resource end, but the policy end? Early childhood, K through 12, beyond that, to allow localities to decide, raise their own funding, or should the federal government get more involved? You know, we already have standards in place, but what about resources? Should there be more standards? Should there be more education policy coming from the top? It's a question we're all grappling with at the local level and the federal level. You think about crime, public safety. You think about the number of guns on the street. Should it be up to a lo local state or local government to try to figure out how to control crime? Or should there be a national policy on that? Should we allow Ed Davis, my new police chief, others, to decide, along with other communities, on how they're going to control crime? This is a question. Immigration policy. Should we be hands off? Should we be more involved? These are the questions at the local level that affect you and me as a municipality and the decision maker, me again, the mayor of every party, everyone that comes to my office, his policies from the top are interconnected, not just from a money end, but a policy end. Finally, foreign policy. We know what's gone on in this last decade. Many of you know I'm a veteran of the Iraq War. I, spent, I signed up for the Navy, Navy Reserves in 2000. Two, just before, right after 9-11, came back. We've had two wars. You, you guys know all the information on it. We have two wars. We've been involved internationally on the military end. The president's winding down Afghanistan. He's withdrawn troops from Iraq, where I was a couple of years ago. Again, do we, as a country, become a country who continues to build up our military presence around the world? Is that important? Do we spend your taxpayer dollars on that? Is that important? Do we spend more money not only on military and defense, but do we spend more money in foreign aid? There's a philosophy about that on either side. It has an effect on the amount of money we're spending domestically, and how much money we're able to spend in municipalities at the local level. All these questions I know we're going to grapple with in this course. I think about this every single day. I have a voice in it as mayor. We're going to dive into this and drill down on this when we go through each one of these policy questions. Now, Barry has allowed me to editorialize a little bit. <laughs> which I will. I want to say a few things in closing. I believe very, very strongly, um, and this is my personal opinion, because we're going to be looking at all sides of this, that this country, when it is successful, taps into its diversity. It taps into its promise of opportunity. And it taps into that commitment for future generations. I think, as a mayor, talking to citizens every single day, that we've been through very difficult times in the last 10 years. And I think that we have bailed out various industries to get us to a point where we didn't get into, a, into the Great Depression. And unemployment could have been higher our debt could have been higher, and we could have been engaged in multiple conflicts around the world if the president had made certain decisions over the course of the last four years. As a mayor, in being able to provide basic services to my citizens, knowing 
that there is an inter interconnectedness with the federal government from a policy and a resource center. I think those decisions have been critical to my community. Um, but we face the next chapter in the next four years. And as a country, we're going to have to make some tough decisions, just like mayors do every single day, about fiscal policy. Where do we spend? Where do we cut back? Where do we invest? And we have to have an honest dialogue with each other about what has made this country so successful and what will make it successful in the future. future. Uh, so I am very much looking forward uh, to being a part of this class. And um, I'm honored to be here. And I uh, look forward to, to the next several weeks. Thank you very much.